Hello, Dragonfly Swarm. Before you storm my house, let me just say this super upfront. I want you to pick whatever standard five star your heart desires. This video is not forcing you to pick any one character. But if you're a new player or even an older player who struggles with end game content in some way, or you're just looking to clear it more efficiency with fewer resources, I would like to recommend picking Tignari as your anniversary five star. Every standard banner five star character has some use in their own way, be it for newer players or for general use, but I believe Tignari sits just above most of them for several reasons. And before you angry type at me, I was a day one Kuching main, so this statement is coming from the heart. Hear me out. This video will explain several intricate reasons why Tignari stands out as as a well-rounded and reliable choice from the standard 5-star pool, such as his resource efficiency, his easy investment teams, etc. And while I'll only be very briefly glossing over his best builds, I will be thoroughly explaining his best teams in 5.0 and where you can find the greatest use for him. All for the purposes of helping you decide if this little dendro guy is the right pick for you, because even though he is a bit better than most other characters in the standard banner, he still might not be for you in the end. So watch this through, make an educated decision, and then subscribe if this video helps you, because because why not? Anyways, Tignati is a Dendro bow wielder who specializes as a single target spread DPS, wherein he uses his special charge shots and his burst to very quickly dish out a massive amount of damage. Essentially, you toss his elemental skill out, spam his three empowered charge shots, and then close his rotation out with his burst. But obviously, this rotation may change considerably depending on your team and their setup or energy needs. He is the very first Dendro DPS that we were introduced to with Sumeru's release, and after his dedicated raid up banner, he was placed in to the standard 5 star pool, that very same pool that you and I will be able to choose from when 5.0 releases. So why exactly is Tignati considered pretty much the best 5 star to pick from and why am I recommending him to you? Well, it's because of several reasons. The first and most straightforward is that he and his teams are generally very easy to invest in. While I'll discuss the team aspect more in detail later, what you need to know about Tignati is that it is generally quite easy to farm for him as your team's Dendro DPS unit because of the multitude of equipment options at his disposal depending on your situation. For example, although Tignati has amazing 5-star bow options as well as respectable 4-star bow choices, if you don't have a single spare bow of such rarity to give him, Slingshot, a 3-star bow, is a confident fallback for him that you will very likely have at least one copy of. And if you're consistently triggering the passive damage buff on his cluster bloom shots, this bow performs competitively with an impressive number of his other higher rarity options. But it does not end there, because even some of his best artifact set options are extremely resource friendly, such as Wanderer's Troop, which usually comes out on top as his very best artifact set when you already have another character on the team running Deepwood Memories artifact set for the much needed Dendro Resistance Shred. Wanderer's Troop is so special though because it's a set that you can obtain from many different sources even if you're not explicitly spending resin on its artifact domain, so along your journey you'll very likely come across some usable set pieces for your Tignati. Although if you're running Tignati in a team where no other unit can use it, he will instead be required to run the 4-piece Deepwood set if you want his damage to remain feasible. Just keep that in mind. But essentially, Tignati is very easy to build compared to other more specialized characters, some of whom have very specific build requirements or stat thresholds that restrict their options or leave their best options as harder to obtain weapons and artifacts. Honestly too, this has kind of been the running theme with Dendro teams ever since Sumeru came out. I remember being absolutely baffled back in the early Sumeru rollout because up until Dendro teams became a thing, building teams usually required a lot of explicit effort and intensive gearing up based on each character's desired stats and equipment as well as the more intricate interactions with team building. But once Dendro introduced reactions like Hyper Bloom, and in Tignati's case, Spread and Aggravate, suddenly we had the means of creating insanely powerful teams with far less effort, or rather, at far lower a cost. So to further elaborate on that, yes, Tignati does technically have the highest average damage potential of any of the standard banner DPS characters. He is primarily a single target damage dealer, so he will not outperform units like Diluc and Kuching in most AoE scenarios, but much of the time this isn't an issue at all because Spiral Abyss Floor 12 almost always incorporates single target fights into their challenges, and Tignati is something of a single target beast. The ICD on his main source of damage is low enough that he gets a significant boost in damage from the Spread Reactions damage amp, which can then be further increased by things like Tignati's crit and his damage percent bonuses, etc. So very clearly he is a character who was designed specifically to work very well with the Aggravate and Spread Reactions, and it allows him to reach potentially massive DPS ceilings in harder content 
present of the game. It's also worth noting too that his rotations are considerably shorter than most teams in the game, which means you have a lot more flexibility with managing your rotations and increasing your total team DPS based on which characters you team him up with and how well they can fill up his downtime. This insinuates that while other Electro characters can work well with Tignati, if you decide to invest into the team further with something like a C6 Fischl or a Yaimiko, you can squeeze out significantly more team DPS than you already had access to. There is also one more point that I wanted to bring up, especially after seeing Zajef discuss it in his own video the other day, which is the value of Tignati's constellations. I feel that this is an important conversation to have since we are talking about a free 5 star character, and since he's a standard character, you're not unlikely to nab a few of Tignati's constellations along your journey anyways. Unlike a few other members of the standard character pool, Tignati's constellations can actually be notably significant for his DPS and his build flexibility, as Zajef briefly mentioned in his own video. For example, and I'm showcasing KQM's own calculations for these constellations, at C1, Tignati gets around a 7% overall personal damage buff from the extra crit rate, and it becomes less difficult to farm for strong builds on him with this bonus stat. At C2, there's actually an even more significant damage bonus in the form of a Dendro damage buff. And although it is technically a conditional buff, most of the enemies Tignati fights anyway will usually linger around long enough in his Dendro field to make adequate use of the buff. Because remember, his rotations are very short and very fast. You don't need long to utilize the buff. C3 is kind of bleh. C4, however, grants a huge bonus to his average personal damage output, as well as even more build flexibility since he's getting free elemental mastery. And this EM bonus applies to his team too, so overall it can be a notable boost to not only his damage, but his entire team's damage. C5, once again, very forgettable. But finally, at C6, Tignati's total DPS increases by a really solid 26-ish percent, which does overall tally up to almost 75% higher damage output than his C0 and his C0 already dishes out very respectable damage. But all that is to say, if you're sitting at one of these more notable potential constellation breakpoints, it can be quite worth considering taking it for Tignati, because as far as value goes, most of his constellations provide a respectable boost to his sole job in a team, dealing a ton of dendro damage. And I suppose that leaves me with one more major concern to address for those of you still undecided. What do Tignati's best teams look like in 5.0? This section will go over the important aspects of Tignati's team building potential, mostly so you can get an idea of what characters and playstyles you'll have to adopt if you choose to bring him home as your 5 star anniversary reward. For Tignati, as I comedically brushed on earlier, he has one singular team archetype that he excels in, but don't let that immediately turn you away, because within this team archetype, he has, as time has gone on and new characters have come out, been given quite a number of options to work with that can sometimes drastically customize the team's playstyle experience based on your preferences. So although Tignati's only exceptional option is the spread and aggregate aggravate team archetype, wherein you slap a dendro unit and an electro unit together to increase both of their damage outputs, he's got quite a few options at his disposal that I'll discuss in detail, starting with the newer and fresher variants of the team, double dendro aggravate teams. I say these are newer and fresher because for quite a long time, there were no viable dendro survivability units to support Tignati in the way that he needed to be supported, whilst also providing him with the very important deepwood artifact buffs. Essentially, if you didn't have Nahida, you were generally at quite a noticeable loss with the team's total potential, because Kole and DMC alone could not provide for the energy requirements, adequate usage of deep wood, and survivability that Tignati needed to thrive. And they also did not make up for this with massive team-wide utility or damage like Nahida did, and still does. This left most players with the option to either put deep wood on Tignati and make him the sole dendro unit in the team, which negatively impacted both his total damage output and his energy requirements, or suck it up and use Kole or DMC, who did not provide as much to the team, especially if you didn't have other units to help pick up their slack, like Zhongli, C6 Fischl, or Yaimiko. Now though, you have amazing options, like Baiju and Kirara, who can both adequately wield the Deepwood Artifact set for Tignati, and both also provide much needed utility, mostly shields, to keep him safe and uninterrupted as he dishes his damage out. Not only that, but both Kirara and Baiju are particularly well suited to Tignati's rotations and provide him with the ability to build his team much more offensively, since they are not only covering the Dendro support slot, but also simultaneously the survivability 
slot, allowing much more room to fill your last two team slots with far more aggressive teammates. You should note that Yao Yao can also technically fill the slot for similar reasons, but she doesn't provide shields, so you'll have to adjust your gameplay and be aware of possible interruptions to your rotations if you decide to fill your remaining team slots with the more aggressive teammates rather than a shielder. Nahida, and I believe this generally goes without saying, is by far the most useful aggressive Dendro teammate if you'd rather go down that route, but we'll discuss that in a little bit. But once you've slotted your Tignati team with one of these other Dendro supports, the rest is generally left available for you to do either a double Electro Flex or an Electro and an Animo Flex. No matter which of these two options you choose to explore, both options lead to a similar outcome. Put an Electro unit in the team to enable the Aggravate reaction and massively enhance their own damage, either with another Electro battery or an Animo unit who can shred Electro resistance. For example, you could run something like Fischl and Yaimiko in your Flex slots for a massive increase in total team DPS, and both of these units provide great usage of Tignati's frequent downtime in any given rotation. But equally as viable, you could run something like Fischl and Kazuha, where Fischl deals her own massive aggravate damage, and Kazuha shreds electro resistance, provides electro damage buffs, and swirls aggravate damage of his own for a massive boost in offensive support for Fischl. This is all to say, with the double Dendro archetype, if your second Dendro unit has already fulfilled the team's survivability needs, you're left with a lot of viable options to fill your electro slot and your final flex slot. Some options are far better than others, like Fischl, Yaimiko, and Kazuha, who absolutely carry the premium versions of these teams, but there are other great options to enable the team as well if you don't have these units. But what if you don't have a Dendro support who can also cover the team's survivability needs? In that case, your Signati teams at a baseline will need to look a little bit more like this. You'll still be required to have an Electro unit, but I also strongly recommend using your third team slot for a Shielder or a Healer. The problem is you'll need a Shielder or a Healer who won't massively disrupt the team's aggravate and spread reactions with their own element. So characters like Toma, for example, will not work with this team. He applies too much pyro and frequently disrupts the reactions that allow Tignati and his Electro teammates to dish out massive damage. Instead, you'll need to look out for characters like Zhongli or Bennett or Diona, whose own elemental applications do not frequently disrupt spread reactions. I personally prefer shielders in my Tignati teams for the interruption resistance, and if you have Diona's C6 elemental mastery buffs, she becomes a very valuable teammate for Tignati, but Zhongli is still almost always the best non-Dendro shielder to run with him. But once you've filled your survivability slot with a non-Dendro support unit, and you've filled your Electro slot with an adequate enabler for Tignati, your very last team slot can once again be quite a versatile flex slot. For example, if you want to boost Tignati's own personal damage, I'd recommend filling the spot with a second Dendro character who can wear the Deepwood Artifact set and provide good energy for Tignati's burst. Characters like Nahida, Kole, and DMC kind of fit this category. But if you'd rather double down on your Electro teammate's damage, you could instead opt to keep Deepwood on Tignati and run a second Electro unit or an Animo unit. Either way, Tignati will still be a centerpiece of this team with his massive personal damage output. These options simply make slight variations in where you'll have to spend your resources and how you'll have to manage your rotations. And overall with Tignati's teams, these are generally the majority of his most recent options and it should give you a good idea of where you'll be investing your resources as well as how you'll need to tailor your playstyle in order to accommodate him. None of his team rotations are particularly difficult to execute, nor are they usually very picky with rotation orders, especially since the aggravate and spread reactions are so accommodating and easy to perform, with far fewer restrictions and intricate details to consider than reactions like vape, reverse vape, melt, reverse melt, freeze and shatter. <laughs> All in all, Tignati is a quite entry-level friendly DPS character whose playstyle and teams are not only very easy to put resources into, but also very easy to play. Even then though, his late game potential is quite far above average in single target scenarios because his kit works so well with the spread reaction, and his teams all have a lot of room for other immensely powerful teammates that can, if you so choose to invest more and more into the team, propel his strengths far, far higher. As good as he already is at a baseline, it should be noted that there's also quite a lot of room to invest in him to make him in my educated opinion, one of the best characters to have from the standard banner pool. This video is not meant to dissuade you from selecting whatever character makes your heart happy, but it is meant to educate those who are interested in powerful characters who might give them the most bang for their buck in the anniversary selector. Plus, I guess, if just for anyone who is curious about Tignati's worth as a character. But that is about it from me. If this video helped you in any way, please subscribe and join my Discord server, and I will see you guys in the next video.